So as I mentioned yesterday, today's video will be in a slightly different format. I'm going to present you with uh, maps, images of the major migrations, the major Y-DNA groups of humanity, the two uh, go hand in hand. Uh, and most of the sources I use today will be, most of the maps I use will be my own creations based on the information. Uh, but this one here is from a study which I'll credit in the about section. And uh, yeah, as you can see here, the earliest branches uh, to split off and the earliest migrations from, from the group from which all others descend uh, happened about 200,000 years ago, up to 200,000 years ago. Uh, the A and B groups, which are found in archaic Africans, were the earliest to split off. Uh, then after that, you can see that the um, out of Africa population descends from a population that split off 70 to 60,000 years ago. Uh, they entered Southwest Asia. And from there, many, many other groups split off. Some went east, some went west. Uh, and we'll see. I'll go into depth in the following videos about uh, each of the, the major clades. Um, but as you can see, the, uh, the Cro-Magnon develops in the Levant, uh, it's got date to 50,000 here, enters Europe around 40,000, we've got 45,000 here, uh, that's the very early period of pushing Neanderthals out, um, and then yeah, another population goes east, you can see, uh, develops there in India, in the Indian subcontinent, 65,000 years ago, and from there splits off and goes uh, east and south. Uh, and then various populations go north. You can see there uh, one of the populations which starts with the, the basal, basal Eurasians uh, instead goes northeast onto the steppe. That's the very interesting uh, P that gave rise to the, to the majorly successful um, Q and R haplogroups. groups. So that map gives you the dates of the migrations. This map goes into a lot more detail uh, showing the divisions and the subdivisions uh, and you can match the two up and you can see which migrations uh, these each relate to. Uh, in, in Europe obviously you have a later R1 migration over an earlier I, uh, I2 and I1 uh, migration. So just bear that in mind when you're looking at the map. It does show I2 and I1, but R1, I, uh, R1 A and B are shown over the top. Uh, and you have similar situations uh, in other areas, such as in, in the Arabia where and the Levant, where J1 and J2 in the north are prevalent, but there are many other haplogroups that are present uh, due to earlier migrations and admixtures. Uh, S, M, N, O branch in the east. You have I, J, which formed in the Levant and then split up with J staying south and I going north. Uh, you have the northern branch of P, which left an area uh, around the Indian subcontinent and went into the north, and there it became R2, which then conquered India, R1A, which conquered Europe and then conquered India again, and Q, which conquered the Amerindias. Um, C used to be prevalent in Iberia, as I've mentioned in a recent video, but now as you can see, C is the major group in much of Central Asia and in some of the Northwestern Amerindians. And C, C is actually interestingly named because C is actually closer to the group succeeding D and E than, than D and E are. Uh, so C is a bit, little bit strangely named. It's CF. Um, and that splits off a fair while after the DE split. That's another another long distance between major clades splitting. Uh, not quite as long, well, not anywhere near as long as the splits between A and B. And then all of the others are relatively recent splits, and generally the subclades, the ones that are designated with A's and B's, are much more recent splits.